Lady Victoria Harvey is one of Britain's best known socialites, royal experts. She's also a MAGA supporter. We'll come to that later. But Lady V, uh, <laughs> I have look. My hat, actually, <laughs> yeah. on the fireplace. <laughs> I have a couple of hats, signed, signed ones as well. But look, I have missed you. You were obviously one of the regulars on my GB News show. No one knows inside the British royal family and British high society like you. Obviously, there's been so much going on. So I couldn't wait for the launch oh, of my new show. I had to talk to you this week. So let's yeah. start with the breaking news. Catherine, the Princess of Wales, has cancer. You knew before the announcement. So I imagine you were horrified at all of the trolling that she was receiving. You know, I think for her to get to a point where she had to do that video release when she has, obviously it was a shock, right? It was it was probably mm. something very unexpected, especially at her age, whereas King Charles, I think it was probably not as such a shock um, given his age, but for her to be put in a corner like that and have to do, you know, well, it was her choice, right, to do a video, which I think was excellent and really showed how strong she is. I think it's just terrible. And now people are trying to say that it's AI and it's a green screen and, oh, she wore that jumper before seven years ago. I mm. mean, look, she's known to reuse her clothes. Like, that's no secret. So I just think it's awful. I think, you know, I love a conspiracy now and again, but this has kind of gone too far. Okay, so let's clear a couple of things up there because there's a lot to unpick. So yeah. firstly, you are absolutely categorical that this was a real video because I've seen mm. everyone on social media going crazy too, saying this is AI, it's a deep fake, her ring disappears at some point, there's something going on with her hair. You're yeah. saying that this is a real video. Uh this is a real video. There's no way after that whole situation <laughs> with yeah. the photo edit that they are going to do anything wrong going forward because they know, the Kensington Palace and Buckingham Palace, they know that, you know, they are being put under the microscope. And so, no, I think it's a genuine video. Um, I also think the video that was taken at the farm shop in Windsor, I think that is a genuine video as well because some people are you know the internet trolls are saying oh that's not her that's a body double and you know no i think that's definitely her okay but you do think it sounds like and by the way i think this too that to an extent her hand was forced the original plan was not for her to go on camera and make this very personal announcement but given her whereabouts and what was going on with kate had become the number one trending story in the world to an extent even though it was a brilliant video she was forced into this wasn't she um yeah she was she was pretty much forced into it um because like people were saying you know she's not even alive and she's you know has she died i mean you know the rumors like so 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 crazy and um it got it got so bad that yeah it, the only way to kind of get rid of those rumors would be to actually do a video and talk about it um and i think that was very very brave of her to do that and Lady V, what do you know? Because as I say, you knew a lot about this. We were speaking well before the announcement was made. What do you know? And I know you can't breach any privacy, and I'm not asking you to do that. But what do you know about how serious this cancer is? And is Catherine going to be okay? Um, I believe she will be okay. It's not uh, as serious as King Charles it's sort of very pre early stages. So, um, you know, fortunately having that operation, they found it very, very early. You know, this is the good thing, right? You go in for something else and then you, you, you know, this has actually happened with the Duchess of York as well. Like it was just a, a, a normal regular check that was going on. And then they happened to find, you know, something that they're not expecting or some cells that are, you know, not not ordinary cells. So um, I I mean, I really, you know, William needs his queen, um, especially when we don't know how long 
King Charles is going to be on the throne. So I think it is quite rocky for the monarchy right now. Um, I do find it very strange that literally three members of the royal family have had cancer announcements within about six months. Um, it does really make me think, you know, literally the British monarchy is under attack right now. Yeah, it feels that way, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. So what is going on and how difficult is this going to be for William? I mean, this is a man who is not only now carrying the weight of his family on his shoulder. I mean, it's hard enough, by the way, to, to look after a father uh, battling very serious cancer. And we'll come to Charles shortly, let alone a wife. But the problem is the monarchy now is really relying on him because for all of her uh, positive qualities, we can't expect Queen Camilla to be leading the charge, can we? And Queen Camilla has been leading the charge. You know, I think she has really um, come through as being incredibly strong. She's been a consistent force um, behind Charles. Mm. And, um, you know, she's really like leading this right now. But, but she doesn't have the public popularity, does she? That's yeah, I, I mean, William, I think, is generally pretty popular. And, and yeah, 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 yeah. Of Kate, you know, so... Um, but William seems to be stepping up to it. Uh, it's definitely like an added pressure on him um, to have his wife not well and his father. Well, Prince Harry is sort of, you know, running around sports games in Los mm. Angeles and really not being very responsible. You know, his country needs him back. Um, it's it, it, it was already, I think, hard for William with his you know he had he has so many sort of public uh outings and charities and different organizations depending on him and now it's like it's it's really him holding it all up at the moment it is and remember this is a guy who was always very clear lady v that he was going to put his young family first so he always wants to be there for the kids during the school holidays and to pick them up from school. How is he going to be able to balance being such a hands-on dad at the moment, given the responsibilities required uh, of him as an heir to the throne, when the bloke on the throne is actually suffering from incredibly serious cancer? Yeah, it's going to be really hard, but I, I think he can do it. I mean, obviously his children are very important to him so and with Kate as well you know she always put those kids first um so I think I think he will manage to balance it somehow hopefully with some good people around him mm, that's a bit of my concern though mm -hmm. Lady V I don't know if he has those good people around him now because by the way I don't blame Catherine at all for the photoshop fail but mm -hmm. I do blame yeah. the staff at Kensington yeah. Palace. I think it's, it's a bit amateur hour. Yeah, they need some proper people in there. It is actually that they, they have, they've had some uh, very bad guidance, um, how they could have released that photo. I mean, for me, I didn't really actually, you know, look at it that much. Like I thought, oh, this is, and, and then I started reading mm. all the stuff, but I don't know. I didn't find it, it that it looked that fake. Did you? To be I mean, honest, I didn't even I mean, consider like it. I didn't Duffy even photo. consider it. No, exactly. Like something like that Virginia photo of <laughs> Andrew. That now that yeah. sticks out is like there's literally yeah. things wrong with that photo. Well, so we're going to talk about I, that later. I would love. Um, I actually have written his name down. The main guy who did the investigation into the Kate photo. I really want him to investigate the Virginia Kennison mm -hmm. Street photo because. I can see all those things wrong with it right away. I mean, obviously, like, even two years later, two and a half years later, of really looking at it, like, there'll still be something that I didn't see before, you know? Yeah. Well, no, I want to talk all about that. But it's interesting when you talk about that decision by Kensington Palace, though, Lady V, because think about it. They knew at that point that mm. Catherine had cancer, was yeah. going to be having chemotherapy soon. It was false reassurance to the public. And actually, that was not wise. 
No, well, the problem about that photo edit mm. is that it has opened up a whole can of worms now. And yeah. now people are going to question everything, you know, yeah. just like they suddenly question that photograph that the Queen was in, like during COVID. And, you know, that is the sort of thing that they're not going to be able to get away with it. Hence that video. There's no way that that video was AI. They would have especially made sure that that was 1000% real. Mm, I know. At the same time, though, a lot of anti-monarchy Americans and yeah. hard leftists here in the UK, like Owen Jones, for example, the yeah. communist political commentator, they yeah. shamed themselves over the past few weeks, Lady V. I mean, there's this so-called comedian, not funny as far as I'm concerned, called James Barr, who was literally going on Piers Morgan's YouTube show with a T-shirt that said, free Kate, wanting to whip up the same sort of hysteria that surrounded Britney Spears. Oh well, the God, difference is... was when it came to Britney Spears, she wanted to be free. Kate just yeah. wanted to be left alone. So I yeah. do think there's a lot of people who should feel actually very ashamed for the way they've acted over the past month. Yeah, it's disgusting the, the way. And, and that's the thing, of course, it's these anti-monarchists Mm -hmm. um, that have been pushing this narrative that, oh, it's not her, she's a clone, you know, Kate's not alive. I mean, just completely, like, wacky stuff. And very similar, as you're saying, to the Britney Spears, you know, the free Britney. Oh, that's not really Kate. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it is ridiculous. It is ridiculous that she had to be put in that situation where she had to do a video like that. Especially, you know, having to tell three young children and try yeah. and explain it yeah. to them. And by the way, that's the reason she didn't make the announcement yeah, earlier. I it's really of... important to clarify. She didn't want yeah. to make the announcement when the kids were still at school. This yeah. way, George, Charlotte, Louis have three weeks with William and Catherine before they have to return, be yeah. around other children who are going to maybe say nasty things or just ask difficult questions. It gives them a little bit of time. I do have to say, though, uh, when it comes to these sorts of rumours, unfortunately, they can stick. I mean, there are lots of people, Lady V, who still believe that Paul McCartney is not the real Paul McCartney. And I think that's why really? you've got, that's, you know, that's a rumor that's been dating back 50 years. Yeah, there's, oh, there's a rumor yeah. that he died in a car accident in the 60s. Oh, of course it's rubbish. Of course yeah. it's rubbish. But that's why you've got to be really careful with these PR operations. Look, I want to ask you um, what you said about Harry, Prince Harry, just yeah. now. Because you say the country needs him back. I would put it to you, Lady V, actually, that is the last thing William wants. Oh. Well, well, they wouldn't need him back if he's if he comes back alone, obviously. Because so. there's a lot that the public still don't know mm. about just quite how horrific Meghan and Harry were behind the scenes. I mean, you just think about the Oprah interview as an example. Look how awful that was, you know. Yeah. And that's just the start of it. Yeah. That's just the start of it, what they did publicly. Because remember, they threatened to reveal even more information that wasn't in the Oprah interview, that wasn't in the book. Now, William, he certainly doesn't want Harry back in the picture, does he? Um, I don't know. You know, I'm sure if he came back at some point, you know, they're, they're brothers at the end of the day, but uh, there'd have to be a lot of... Um, probably it would take quite a lot of time in between. Mm. Well, yeah, because remember it was Harry who was asking for the apology, which sort of seems ludicrous now. I mean, he's moved on from that now. But don't you think it's actually Harry who mm -hmm. owes William and Catherine, and also, to be honest, Charles and Camilla an apology? Mm. Um, yeah, Camilla, the evil stepmother, he called yeah. her. Yeah, um, and Catherine, yeah. who's I so think, old, think think according to Megan. I mean, as if. Ludicrous. Uh, you know, the thing is, like when, when children's parents remarry, you know, I've seen this with friends and stuff, like, yes, the children then feel sort of put second and it's always the evil stepmother. But the thing is, Camilla, you know, I don't think Charles, like, where would he be without Camilla? Like, she mm. feels sort of like she's kind of his rock, you know? So actually, in a divorce situation, the children should be happy that their parent has got someone else, you know, instead of being on their own, being alone. And what are you hearing about 
Harry and Meghan's relationship at the moment? Are things strong between them? Um, I haven't actually heard so much recently, to be honest. On no, that. it's gone quiet on that front. It's it? gone quiet. Because uh, there were quite a lot of rumours a few months ago that things were rocky. Yeah, I haven't heard much. Um, but interesting that she brings out her new company mm. um, at the time when Kate is less visible as well. Mm. Like, I don't know if that was... Oh, of course well. it was planned. Of mm. course it was planned. No. Everything they it's do like, oh, is Kate's planned. Not around, so this is, you know, this is my chance to bring out a new brand, mm. right? Mm. Let's, let's talk about King Charles because... Mm. There is such a cruel irony to his cancer diagnosis. Now, my understanding, and again, I'm not asking you to divulge anything private medically that, that you've discovered, but my understanding is that this is very serious, what the king is currently facing. Mm. And the it, fact that he waited his entire life to get that job and is then struck down in this way within 18 months. I mean, sometimes life is just incredibly unfair isn't it yeah no it is very unfair and if you look at the history of the royal family you know there has been quite a quite a few royals that have died young from cancer um unexpectedly so you know this wouldn't be the first one but mm -hmm. it is awful because yes he's waited his whole life for this and the fact that they put out that press release you just know that it has to be quite serious. Um, and, you know, I think he has aged quite a lot with the chemo. I mean, the chemo, obviously it does that because it, it, it attacks your whole system, killing all the cells really. So good and bad. So it will be hard for him. He'll fight though, won't he? I mean, he wants to remain on the throne. He wants to make a difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, look, cancer is not a, it, it, it's not like a sudden, you know, he might have five years left, he might have 10 years left at the most, I think. Okay. Which obviously, again, piles the pressure on William, mm. who wasn't expecting to potentially take the throne while his children were still of school age. I think he was very much hoping that his dad would live a long and happy life. Obviously, well, because they're close now, but also so it meant that he could focus on being a father, get the kids off to university, mm -hmm. then think about what life might be like as king. Well, I mean, yes. I mean, because you look at Charles's parents and, you know, grandmother. I mean, you know, they had very long lives. And um, so it is a little bit of, you know, it's a shock, I think, probably to everyone that um, Charles has such serious condition in his 70s. How is he coping? Because he's someone who has never mm. been unwell. Mm. I, yeah, it's it's it must be really really hard for him. Mm. Um, but hopefully we'll get through this. You obviously know lots of people in his close circle. How concerned are they for the king? I think there is a lot of there's a huge concern right now. Mm. Because cancer, as we know, is very unpredictable. You know, you can recover, and this has happened to people that I know, and be given the all clear, and then six months later, you're dead, you know. So what is scary about chemo is when people get the chemo, it kills that part mm -hmm. of the body, but it then often moves. So usually it will start in an organ lower down, and it will gradually make its way to the brain. Um, so, you know, usually that takes at least about six years, depending on how, how serious and what stage it's in. If Charles does get to the point, and of course, please God, let's hope he does make a full recovery. But if he did get to the point where he was critically or gravely ill, can you see any scenario where he would abdicate and pass the throne on to William while he was still alive? I don't think so. I think if he got to the point where he was feeling too weak to carry out duties, um, he would he would do that. I'm, I'm pretty sure, yes. Mm, yes. You know, training for it. Um, yeah, I mean, there is obviously precedent, isn't there? Uh, not 
due to illness, but due to Wallace Simpson. So we do yeah. know uh, that this is something that the British Constitution can deal with. Mm -hmm. Now, look, how ironic is it that you've got your close friend, Prince Andrew, watching all of this going on with his family while having to stay on the sidelines, not able to partake in any royal duties at a time when actually, my goodness, they need some boots on the ground. I know. I mean, at this point, they need every role they, they have that is uh, fit and healthy right now, you know. And so that's the thing. Like, they might have to bring him in at some point because if everyone else is sick and he's healthy, then they need to put him to good use. So for people who don't know, and I know we've had many conversations about this over the years, but let's just very quickly set the situation up with Prince Andrew, because I would say you have been his most prominent and loyal spokesperson outside his former wife, Sarah Ferguson, for the entire time that he has been caught up in this controversy. It was a very brave stance for you to take, Lady V, because when you started speaking up for Andrew, it was at the time that everyone else was running away. There was that catastrophic BBC interview. He was stripped of his duties. He was banished effectively by Charles and William, who even want to get him out of the house, the mansion that he has on the grounds of Windsor Castle. But you believe to this day that Prince Andrew is innocent mm -hmm. and is it and is the victim of quite a significant setup. Um, yeah, no, I do believe he's innocent. Um, so when I started defending him, I remember like the first interview I did on Piers Morgan, and I found it recently. I think it was in 2019. And I actually said back in 2019, before I actually knew what went on, I said, I think that photo looks fake. And at the time, people just sort of silenced me as soon as I said that. And how yeah. can you say that? And these are survivors and, blah, blah, blah. and you know, I, I was really sort of going against everybody, everyone mainstream to suddenly be somebody that was like questioning the girls that they could have possibly lied and you know as the years went by I just in the beginning I didn't want to get too involved like I filmed a couple of documentaries for a different couple of networks as I knew Galen as I knew Jeffrey as I knew Prince Andrew and so I became that person that could actually give some quite valuable opinions as I actually like knew all of them and then two and a half years ago, or just over two years ago, that is when I started to really look into it. I had a message from this girl on Instagram and she sat through Galen's trial. She has a she has a massive following on like mm. Instagram and Subtrack, uh, House and Habit. And I had done my first post on Instagram about Galen, which I had never done before, but I there was a new documentary out in January, 2022. And I went on Lorraine to talk about it. And at the time, like I'd had about seven months of just not talking about anything related to Glenn Maxwell. I just kind of just needed like a break from it all. Anyway, I get this message saying, look, I, I believe you're right. I sat in that trial and I don't believe a lot of these girls. I think they're liars. So that kind of spiraled me into like thinking, wow, okay, I think we have something here. So I started with Virginia Guffrey's Instagram and I just dug through that mm. and I started finding certain messages. It would sounded like people actually had known her and had had some stories and I it 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 went from there and then speaking to people that knew her, people that she had silenced, her organization had silenced, you know, because she pretended that she's got this charity to help survivors and anyone that was trying to question her or, or, or do anything, she just would block them. Like she didn't help anybody. And, and, and just to clarify for folk who don't remember, yeah. 
Virginia mm. Dufre is the Australian blonde who was pictured in that infamous photo yeah. with Prince Andrew. Prince yeah. Andrew did end up agreeing a significant financial settlement with her, but your response to that is he had to do that because otherwise the late Queen's Platinum Jubilee was going to be overshadowed. Yeah, like I believe David Boys and Seagree McCauley, like they they planned that. That was a plan sort of like, let's get as much money out of the royal family as we can because the, the Queen is not well and there's the Jubilee coming up. And, well, actually, I don't know if it was public that the Queen was not well then, but, you know, it was the Jubilee, the Queen was getting very old and they're going to like, you know, people the, knew the queen was in her final years, exactly. and there was massive and, and was pressure from the royal institution not to overshadow the end of her life. So, Andrew exactly. was almost like, put I, between a rock I, and a hard place. I think if it hadn't been the Jubilee, it wouldn't have like been paid off like that way so quickly, but they just wanted it to go away. And and that and that's what happened. Like, he was so, so is your contention that Prince Andrew never met Virginia Dufre? He's apparently never met her. Like, But he, do you believe that? Yeah, I do. You know, and the thing is, he doesn't... I, I mean, there were so many things wrong in that photo, and, I, I mean, I've got it in my phone a million times, mm. unfortunately. But, um, you know, there's so many things that actually the Duchess of York, she pointed out as well. Like, when you see him in that picture... It looks like he, first of all, he never carries a wallet. He's never carried a wallet in his life. Uh, number two, would never have a wallet in his back pocket. He doesn't put anything in a back pocket. Now that photo, there's this weird shape in his back pocket. So like straight away, anyone that knows him knows that that's impossible, right? The shirt that he has on, he doesn't wear shirts like that. That's a, the that's a kind of shirt that Jeffrey Epstein wore. He doesn't wear these wide brim shirts like look at his whole wardrobe that is not him that is basically jeffrey epstein's body with his head on it um and okay. yeah that, that. So, so you believe okay so just to clarify yeah. this you believe the photo was jufre and a man at that address in london but the man was jeffrey epstein not prince andrew yeah i believe she okay. was in london i believe she did pose for those photos um you know i have been in contact now with with the man who says he is the real photographer who we've kind of waited to bring into the public domain because i'm waiting for george tonks to be able to speak first he gets off his probation at the end of may and then a lot will be revealed then. Um, he's the other witness who is on a gag order by a judge right now in Chicago who has a lot of incriminating evidence about Virginia Guffrey and Maria Farmer. Now, is there a bigger picture here? Is it possible mm. that the reason there was so much focus on Prince Andrew and Ghislaine Maxwell, two Brits, was mm. to distract from some of the high-powered Americans who are actually up to their neck in it with Jeffrey Epstein. Yeah, I think it is. A, it, yeah, it was a complete a distraction. And Prince Andrew happened to be the scapegoat in all of it. You know, his his name sells a lot more than maybe some of these other American names that wouldn't get the newspaper columns and, you know, headlines that other people would. And so who's behind this, the deep state? Yeah, I, I think it is a deep state attack. Um, because obviously you've got Bill Gates, it, it's a you've deep got state Bill, Bill Clinton, big, powerful Americans were on Epstein's yeah. island. Mm -hmm. No, it is a deep state attack on the British monarchy, you know, and that is what it is. Did Jeffrey Epstein commit suicide in your view? I don't believe so. No, I. Um, he was killed. I actually, I, I, I think it was his cellmate that killed him. I really do believe that. I did. You watch the Tucker Carlson did a great. Yes, I did. With brother. his brother, yeah. yeah and so and did Megyn Kelly. What I, um, what I think. So from people have who reached out to me, um, on uh, my social media when I 
I posted those pictures of him with his body when he died. And people that actually work with dead bodies, um, they came back to me and they said that if you die lying down, you have, he had those liver spots on his back. So you only get those if you die lying down. So he did not die hanging. He died, I believe, lying in his bed and he was strangled with a kind of a wire because when you look at his neck, it's like blood, it's like cut right into the skin. And then they actually showed photos of the white sheets with not one little bit of blood on that they say this is how he strangled himself. Absolute rubbish. Like also, if you if you um, die strangulation, your the 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 blood moves in your down your body. So actually, the legs would be swollen. And if you look at those photos of him dead, lying on the on the on the on the medical bed, his his legs are very slim and completely normal. So there is no way if you speak to anybody in the medical field, that that body was hanging. Absolutely chilling. Look, when it comes to Prince Andrew, Lady V, you know I'm on a bit of a journey uh, mm, on this. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> I feel like... It's kind of like with... in the beginning, it felt like me and the whole world. And like, yeah. I, I know I was brave to like say you something were. completely different to, to what other people but you know i firmly believed it from the beginning and well, you've been cancelled by a lot of the mainstream media in the uk shows like mm. itv's good morning britain and nervous yeah. having you on talking about prince andrew that they shut you up they i mean Susanna reed had a complete meltdown when i said that these girls were con artists liars i mean the fact is i have never received one legal letter from anybody um, because you know what? They don't want me to in court because they're never going to have Virginia Giuffre and Maria Farmer stand up in a, in a courtroom. Like I've actually seen the emails to the lawyers from George Tonks because George, who is like my main whistleblower, he would be CC'd in all the emails from Maria Farmer to David Boys and all the lawyers and Virginia and you know what? Virginia Giuffre was never planning to go to a courtroom. Like, she's not a credible witness. And I have emails where Maria Farmer says in an email, David Boys doesn't think I can stand up in court. These girls are not reliable witnesses. Yeah, well, and of course, the there was US apology government. to Alan Dershowitz, wasn't exactly. there? Exactly, and, and if you look Over at false trial, allegations. Of course, but the trial of Ghislaine Maxwell, the main girl, right, who, who spoke out about Ghislaine, she was not chosen by the US government to talk as a witness in that courtroom. Why not? Because she is not a reliable witness. And then we saw with Alan Dershowitz exactly what happened. Oh, so, okay, so you have sex with someone like six or seven times and then you may have got it wrong. Like, how is that possible? Okay, so let's say you're right. Let's say you're right. And, and as I say, I... Oh, I, yeah, I know, I'm, I should be getting a medal, right? From <laughs> well, I've been on a journey. I mean, I'm a lady. I don't really want to be a dame, though. I think a dame <laughs> sounds kind of old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't need to be a dame. You're yeah. already Lady V. But look, like let, a knight, I, maybe. I can become a knight. But look, you have you have certainly made me look closer at this case. I've spoken to lots of other people like Alan Dershowitz. I've spoken to lots of people close to Prince Andrew, who I will not name publicly. I know for a fact that the late Queen was utterly convinced in her son's innocence. And she went to her grave knowing that her son was innocent and she was very unhappy with his treatment. So let's just say you're completely right. A lot of people owe Prince Andrew an apology and wouldn't that mean that he deserves to be reinstated? He should go back to work as the Duke of York. Yeah, no, absolutely. When this thing is over, and I'm telling you, I cannot wait till it's over. Um, he should be able to get all his privileges back. And yeah, I mean, an apology. I mean, how, how does one apologize for all those years that he has lost, you know? with these and, false allegations. But can I just clarify, you're not saying Prince Andrew is a perfect bloke, are you? He certainly made mistakes because he should never have gone to New York yeah. and stayed at Epstein's house after Epstein had been convicted. You must admit that was oh, a mistake. No, 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 for sure. 
But, you know, I definitely feel like those photos in the park, like that was a setup, you know? Oh, yeah. He was set up with any doubt. It be a setup. Um, because I don't think, are there any public photos of both of them together? I haven't really seen any. No, it was only the pictures taken by News of the yeah. World in yeah, the park. It's those ones in the park, exactly. So that was, you yes. know. But, but, but you concede he shouldn't have gone. Oh, yeah. Should. No, I, I can see he, he, he shouldn't have gone. But, you know, it's hard. Like, if I try and put myself in his shoes, right, and I have someone who's a really good friend of mine and they get accused of something and, you know, maybe I'm trying to believe that those stories are not true. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but look, I, no it's one knows like more about false allegations than me. a friend of mine that I've maybe done some business with and maybe I just want to go see them in, in real life just to go okay, I'm so, so sorry, but we're not going to be able to, like, keep this friendship yeah. going. But, yeah. you know, I think it was the honourable thing to do it. Which but is obviously what he said in that very controversial interview with Emily Maitlis on the BBC. Now, yeah. I want to ask you about that interview because it's about to be the focus of a major a Netflix documentary. Yeah. Well, no, it's not a documentary. Is it? It's a movie. Yeah. It's called Scoop. It's yeah. based on the book by Sam McAllister, who was the producer at the BBC who booked the interview. How bad is this going to be for Prince Andrew? Because we've seen... With Netflix, they have a lot of influence. Lots of folk believe every single thing they see in The Crown, for example. Well, I think legally they're going to have to be pretty um, uh, cautious, really, because the stuff that we have um, through my whistleblower is going to, like, blow this whole thing up. And so if they try and put things that are clearly not true, then that's going to have an impact. And tell me how Prince Andrew is doing, because I know he was very, very low as a result of all of this. Is is he doing okay now, or is he still just as low? Um, I think he's doing. I think he's doing okay. Um, I think he's just sort of trying to get on with life, but it's hard until these allegations are completely cleared with him. You know. Um, his biggest wish is for him to be exonerated. And that is completely normal. And I really hope that that will happen in the coming months. Can the British monarchy survive everything that they're facing at the moment, Lady V? I think they can. This is not the first time that the monarchy has been going under such scrutiny. And, you know, we always bounce back somehow. The Brits are strong. <laughs> Do you know what? I completely agree. I completely agree. Come on. If the British monarchy can can yeah. survive Wallace Simpson, Wallace Simpson and the Nazi I mean, sympathizer as king, we can survive this, okay? Right, right. Yeah, exactly. Wallace Simpson. So we have Meghan Markle as the sort of new age <laughs> Wallace Simpson. Yes, indeed. Uh, look, well, Lady Victoria Harvey, you're going to be a big part of my new show, Dan. Oh, I'm so excited. So and I cannot wait, but it was so, it was too important. There's too much going on. I just had yeah. to speak to you today. You're absolutely fascinating. What I love about you is you stick to the courage of your convictions, even if it is the unpopular thing to do, even if it is going against every single piece of mainstream thinking. We need more people yeah. like you who are prepared to not only think outside the box, but to pin their colors to the mask. So I think you're oh, brilliant. You. And I mean, you know, look, I have people stopping me in the street and when I'm traveling and stuff, and they're like, wow, you know, like a lot of these so-called conspiracies that I've um, written about and spoken about, like, they pretty much most of them come true. And uh, so people do listen to me now because they're like, oh, wow. OK, she was right. She was right on this and this and this. So I cannot wait for this photo to be proved 1000 percent fake. Well, as I say, you have helped me. I'm not saying you've totally changed my mind, but what you've done on Andrew is you've made me look at the story differently. I come at it now with much more of an open mind. I don't think he's perfect, okay? I think he did yeah, make mistakes, tough, really, but yeah. I do think he has been set up. And it's your work and your investigation uh, which has done that. And we're going to have much more of it over the months to come. So Lady Victoria Harvey, people can follow you on Instagram, right, if they want yeah, to. Yeah, Lady Victoria Harvey.
So, Lady V, come on. I've got, I've got to see your MAGA hat. I've got to see your MAGA okay, hat. So, we have, well, this is one of my signed MAGA hats, but this is, this is a sort of more discreet one from the golf club, from the Trump golf club. And then this is my outrageous, just MAGA. I've actually got um, another one as well. Have you lost friends in British um, high society? I haven't, I haven't worn this around Chelsea yet. I was <laughs> planning to. But don't you think lots more Brits are actually coming around oh to the idea God. that the Trump presidency is I necessary think, to save the world? Like, oh, my God. No, you would be surprised. There's like so many people that love Trump, like in, in the UK, actually, like people have pretty switched on that Joe Biden is absolutely useless. So, yeah. <laughs> well, look, we'll be talking to you throughout the year, Lady V. Thank you yeah. so much. We'll do a make America great again. Yes. Uh, yeah. Make <laughs> make make Britain great again, right? That's what we oh need. well, that's a whole other bloody story, isn't it? But honestly, it's so good to have you. I cannot wait till the show starts and we can do it properly.